Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. So, a quick announcement before we get started. Over the last week, I've managed to get my hands on a number of desktop computers. Some of these are newer than others, but all of them will be used in future projects or for future videos. In particular, I look forward to turning some of these into budget gaming systems, since I know that's what you guys like to see. I'm still waiting for some of the parts I've ordered to arrive so that I can get started on them, but these systems should make up the bulk of my video topics for at least the next three weeks. So now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the topic of today's video. Back in ye old days of yore, circa August 2018, I was looking to get parts for what would become my secondary rig, which I now call Red and Blue. Back then, the system was going to be an upgraded DC7900 containing a GTX 580 and a quad-core LGA775 processor. Knowing what I do now, I would have personally opted for a different, more power-efficient GPU with similar performance, such as the GTX 950, but I hadn't considered it at the time. As far as CPUs go, this machine's OEM motherboard didn't have a chipset which supported LGA 771 Xeon processors, so I looked into consumer-grade quad-core chips instead. Doing some research led me to the Core 2 Quad Q9550, which ran for a neat $25 at the time. Trying to keep my budget at $100, and my GTX 580 having already taken up half of that, I looked into a cheaper alternative. Eventually, I was led to the Core 2 Quad Q9505. It was priced a bit lower than the flagship alternative at $18, so I thought I was getting a steal. Internet resources suggested the 9505 had very minimal performance difference from the 9550, and so it was that the Q9505 became the second CPU I ever purchased after the Ryzen 5 1600X. This CPU served me well when I used it in red and blue up until December when I got the X5470. But since then, I've also realized something about the Q9505, which I hadn't known about before. L2 cache. Generally speaking, CPU cache can be described as super speed or short-term memory used by the CPU for quick operations that don't access the slower, random access memory or RAM. Most modern CPUs have several levels of cache used for storing instructions and data, as well as providing a repository for less volatile memory. In the case of the Core 2 Quad lineup of processors, most had 12 megabytes of L2 cache, such as the Q9550. This CPU had the standard 12 megs of cache and was priced at $530 at launch in March 2008. For those thinking that price was a bit much, some models were released as cost-saving options which had less cache, such as the Q9505. Coming in with only 6 megabytes of L2 cache, but with a heavily reduced price tag at $213, this CPU would have been an attractive option when it released in August of 2009. But how attractive is it by today's standards? After getting my Xeon X5470, I began to wonder whether buying the Q9505 was worth it. Was my purchase a smart option, or was I gimping my system's performance without me even realizing it? Today, I want to look at whether the lower L2 cache of the Q9505 affects it in modern performance, and how that translates to whether you should use it in 2019. To do this, I'm comparing the Q9505 to my Xeon X5470 in a head-to-head -head competition of skill and dexterity. However, it's still going to be a fair fight. I will be underclocking the X5470 to match the Q9505's base clock speed of 2.83 GHz. This will be simulating the Q9550, the actual one of which I still don't have yet. The test system will be my secondary rig, red and blue. I had to think for a good long while about which GPU to use in the test system, but for this video I decided to use the GTX 580, as it better simulates the budget gaming scenario. In other words, if you're going out and buying a CPU such as the Q9505 for your next build, you probably don't have the money to spend on an expensive graphics card. So, what benchmarks will we be running today? Since the goal of this video is to assess CPU performance for budget gamers, I will be focusing on gaming benchmarks as well as some synthetics. My games library is criminally tiny right now, and I am aware of this issue, but for now I'll use some games that I have quick access to. These include CSGO, Team Fortress 2, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. In addition, I'll run synthetic CPU benchmarks such as Cinebench R15 and Passmark to see how CPU cache changes performance at a deeper level. So first up in the gaming benchmarks will be Team Fortress 2. At 1080p in high settings, the Q9505 scored an average FPS of 61, while the simulated Q9550 earned an average FPS of 63. There's essentially no difference in these figures. Next up is CSGO, where the Q9505 earned an average FPS of 69, and the simulated Q9550 earned an average FPS of 66. As with Team Fortress 2, these numbers are essentially identical. In our gaming benchmarks, the final nail in the coffin comes from Rise of the Tomb Raider, in which the Q9505 scored an average FPS of 44, and the simulated Q9550 earned exactly the same figure. It's important to note that the settings in these benchmarks were selected such that the CPU would bottleneck a tad sooner than the GPU. This means that, even with the CPUs under full or nearly full load, their gaming performance shouldn't differ in the slightest when cache is the independent variable. But what we haven't seen yet are the synthetic CPU benchmarks. 
These figures have the potential to eliminate important differences between processors that gaming may not be able to. To this effect, we'll use the usual suite of synthetic tests, starting with Cinebench R15. We see a slight difference in performance across this test. Here, the Q9550 earns a multi-core score of 311 and a single-core score of 80, while the Q9505 earns a multi-core score of 298 and a single-core score of 71. Of most important note is the single-core score, where a difference of 9 points means a lot more than the same difference in the multi-core score. As I've shown before, a single core score difference of 10 points can mean as much as a 50% higher difference in frame rate in games, depending on how they're optimized. Next up is Passmark, in which the Q9550 earns a higher overall score than the Q9505. Interestingly, this test shows that the single-threaded performance between the CPUs is identical, bringing us to a much different conclusion than Cinebench does, namely that gaming performance should be the same. 7-Zip shows that the differing CPU cache between the Q9550 and the Q9505 does not affect compression and decompression very much. The difference between the two scores was less than 500 points, which is just outside of statistical significance, if you consider that to be 5%. Lastly, we come to ASUS RealBench, which provided some of the most interesting results during our tests. The Q9505 scores higher overall, as well as in tests except for heavy multitasking. Though as with before, all of these figures are outside of statistical significance, meaning that, for all intents and purposes, even synthetic CPU benchmarks don't show an appreciable difference between these processors. It sounds like what the internet told me was true. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the Q9505 and the Q9550 in gaming or even synthetic benchmarks. Back in the day, it's possible that these processors may have had a noticeable performance difference. But in the modern age, where the IPC of LGA775 processors is just not what it used to be, both these CPUs are just as saturated and so they perform just the same. So if you're in the market for a quad-core LGA775 processor and you're thinking about buying the Q9550, consider the Q9505 instead. You'll be saving a few extra bucks, which you can put towards other components, such as a better graphics card. So that looks like it's going to do it for today, guys. I really enjoyed putting today's episode together, as it's a question I've been wanting to answer for a long time. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you didn't, drop a dislike on it. If you enjoy this sort of content, or if you're excited about the budget gaming systems I have coming up, consider subscribing to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell to get alerts anytime I post a new video. So guys, that'll do it for now. I'll see you guys next week.